Hello everybody, this is Jason. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. If you are new here, welcome. I post content related with WebRTC, JavaScript and Golang. If this interests you, please hit that subscribe button and stay updated. Welcome back. Uh, we're back for another tutorial um, around Tori. Uh, we're going to do, do a real simple one today but um, the app's simple but uh, there's a few things I can show you on that one okay let's see what we're going to build um, to start off we'll go here okay basically it is a CPU usage okay this is not a system wide um, CPU usage it's this app CPU usage as you see it's really low obviously there's nothing on it but this is a real-time um, CPU usage what this app is using okay I'm um, further to do okay we'll close that off um, we're gonna build this from scratch okay so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make a new Tori project first so npm uh, create Tori app we're going to use um, TypeScript and uh, Webpack to pack it, okay? There won't be a lot of TypeScript going on here, but um, I just feel it's a lot easier to set up than, um, you know, the plain JavaScript one. Okay, we'll give this app a name, uh, our project name. We'll call this uh, CPU Monitor. Okay, and the app title. Uh, we want CPU Monitor. Okay, and we just have it as a vanilla JS uh, without bundler. Okay, we I will show you how to do all that. Okay, not in detail because our focus is not Webpack, so we we just like having the tools there. All right, now we go into CPU user uh, monitor. That's the directory, and we just do an npm install first, so it grabs everything it needs. Okay, done. And we open this in VS Code. Okay, yep, we trust that. Before we go any um, like to carry away, uh, we will do a few things. We need uh, to install a few dependencies. Okay, what we need here, we'll just go npm install. Uh, we want webpack coi. These three things are not developed. Uh, dev dependency okay that's the first three things we need <clears throat> okay while well that's going we'll might as well create a webpack um, config webpack.config.js okay uh, I'm going to copy and paste, okay, because I mean, as I said before, our purpose of this tutorial is not Webpack, okay, if you guys like, I can do do another Webpack um, uh, tutorial, but there's thousands of those, thousands around YouTube anyway, so you probably can find it yourself, we need this plugin, <coughs> so we put that in, oops, <coughs> Okay, and we put that in the dev thing as well. We also need TypeScript. Okay, uh, hold on a sec. Wait till that finish. So we go EVMI uh, TypeScript <coughs> in the development, and also Webpack wants uh, TS loader as well. Otherwise, it won't compile. Okay. Okay. I think we got everything. I like to show you, you know, like how everything sort of starts, okay? Rather than we do it as we need it, we do everything pre pre before, okay? And we, we also need a TS config. This one. Okay, I'm gonna copy and paste that. Uh, all this code will be in, in my repo, so um, you can like carefully look at it later, okay? 
don't worry about this warning because we haven't got anything um, any TypeScript files yet so that's why that that is there okay in the webpack you notice we designated a folder called um, source UI okay which we're going to create that src dot UI okay that that's where our TypeScript stuff is um, going to live okay I'm gonna do a index.ts okay that should go away now yep that went away another thing here I want to sort of mention here as well okay look at that we we have um, done a um, template here okay and we'll call the CPU monitor okay so what that means is every time we do a build okay it will use this uh, template.html as our template so we automatically get a template we um, organize not much use in this case but in, in a real project it will be useful okay but I thought I, it's nice to show you that as well so we do HTML5 template here okay and I'll show you what you mean what I mean in a sec <coughs> CPU monitor okay and we're going to grab a diff here so we can put our um, CP actual CPU um, stuff here and we'll just call the CPU uh, monitor so we can pick up this and put stuff in this diff okay from JavaScript all right next thing is and let's compile this Tori so we get the basic stuff okay it won't compile okay as I said to you the last video we need to change the app ID okay before this thing will compile okay we'll wait till that finishes okay looks like it's done okay and it's here <coughs> because we don't have the HTML file um, here uh, might as well make one so we, we can see this thing is working okay uh, HTML5 and we'll just put hello world okay we save that and let's reload this <coughs> let's run it again there we go hello will okay so this is working good now we need to go to the config of Tori here we go we'll change this because if you want to like compile it you know obviously we're doing development so it doesn't really matter but if you want to compile it it's not going to work okay so I'm just going to put it on my website and then dot CPU monitor okay might take that bar out because I might not like it and another thing here we're going to change this thing here to that I think it's 3000 okay because I defined it in here oh sorry it's 8080 let's go back to there so we live we can live load this um, thing uh, at this website uh, when, when we finish okay so that is pretty much the basic setup all done okay uh, with all this this folder you know that's where everything compiles and in here that's the dev server okay we define some variables here and if we want to open automatically it opens a web page when we com after we compile and also we call this thing uh, bundle.js when it when it finally um, compiles and this is the template okay so we're going to if anything we want to modify in this template when it comes compile time it will grab this template so so we don't have to go in here and change all this stuff every time we compile that's the whole reason of that template it's quite useful um, webpack um, extension or plugin whatever you want to call it okay so okay let's get into some rust coding first and then we go into our typescript file and like hook it up like how to bring the stuff we write in rust okay we just need one couple of packages okay and here dependencies okay call these uh, okay hold on a second we need Tokyo okay 
We only need it for one thing, but hey, anyway. We'll put it in. Okay, so these two things we need. Okay, there's the performance monitor, which is, gives us the live uh, reading of our CPU usage of the current app. Okay, that's what this is. And this is the reason why you want to write Rust code rather than just write JavaScript and just pack it and where you go. Um, this is really powerful because you can you have access to the user's computer, you know, to grab live data. In Tokyo, uh, we just specify we're going to use version one. Uh, we're going to use full, okay, for now, uh, because our purpose uh, it's just a demo, okay. Otherwise, you would you wouldn't want to do that and in real time unless you know just being lazy then yeah do that but otherwise yeah just go full you get everything okay next thing we will go into our main.rs okay and we'll start writing our it's not not a lot of code going on in here but the purpose of this is to show you how powerful you know you can interact between rust and javascript which you can write some sort of uh, Rust code that gets compiled into native code, and yeah, you, you can use it in JavaScript. Okay, so first of all, we need to go after here, and we're going to go setup. Okay, and that's a closure, and we grab the app. Okay, oops, we don't need that. Okay, and in there we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna bring in our um, stats, the CPU um, package. We'll call the stats p processor. Okay, and process stat. So we get autocomplete because we already have the crate, and we want a current. Okay, and we just unwrap. Okay, so we've got that. Oh, sorry, that's going to be outside. Excuse me. Okay, we have to put that out, outside here. <coughs> okay, and here we're going to go and get the app handler. I'll grab the app handle. Okay, not handler, handle. Okay, and then we're going to spun this um, because we need to run a loop so it, it checks every um, so often. So we need to do a loop. So by doing that, we have to go Tori. Um, async runtime spawn. Okay, now we can use this thing as if we are using Tokyo. Okay, if you know Tokyo, if not. Just ignore what I just said, okay. And then now we can loop this with async away, okay. And now on top we need to grab the usage processor, okay. And we grab that from stats p, okay. That's basically um, we grab the what do you call it the package initializer in other words and unwrap it. And we're gonna times this by a hundred. F64. We shouldn't have to do uh, times 100. We'll just get it real. Okay? Real time. Oh. Okay, let's times it by 100 because I. This is um, on the. What do you call it? Uh, the examples, okay, of the package. Okay, because we haven't finished this function that's why okay we're going to sleep this and we're going to use the Tokyo package because that has a, um, a single wait duration did I spell that wrong d-u-r-a-t-h-i-o-n yep. from millisecond millisecond we'll say uh, every second yeah. Uh, wait. Okay. 
Okay, let me bring that thing in then first. Sleep. Let's bring duration in first. That comes from the standard library. Time. Duration. Right, that's what that is. Ah, oh, I know why it's giving that. Yeah, now now we are now we're talking. Okay, sleep times by that. Okay, now we're gonna print print it. Okay, to see um the result. Okay, we want two decimals. Oh, curly brackets. And then it's a percentage after that. And we're going to print this thing out. Why is it expecting a comma? Let me write this thing out again. <coughs> Sleep. Duration. Oh, oh wait. Okay, that looks better. Now, in here, we need to go duration, uh, mil from milliseconds, 1000, which is one, every, every minute, or every second, I think it is. Make it two seconds, eh? Okay, that looks better. Okay, now we're going to uh, admit this um, result back to the, uh, what do you call it, um, back to the JavaScript end, okay? And we're going to use this app handle, okay, and then admit all, okay, admit, admit all means we are admitting to everything is, ev every single window, okay? You can specify the window, but hey, for our purpose, we're just going to do admit all and we call this event usage okay then we pass this guy back use usage okay before we do that let's make a struct up the top so we can uh, return a, pay a payload okay we'll just call this thing a payload payload and usage and it's a string okay we want back so in here payload and now that usage and okay, we want usage we want this to be a um string because this returns f64 okay we need to um cast this to a string so the easiest way is use the format macro okay this is just like from uh, how you use uh, print line so like this bit here we can just copy that over all right cool and what else we need we need to unwrap this okay unwrap. what's that say Okay, <clears throat> we need one more crack. We need to serialize and deserialize. Therefore, we better come and grab this. Mm, right here. Okay, and we do have it. Okay, we just need to import it, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's all good now. Let's get rid of this. We do not need this. Okay, uh, believe it or not, this is it for the Rust side of things. Okay, and now we're going to start writing our um, TypeScript here. The TypeScript is really easy. Okay, uh, let's start that. Let's input the Tari stuff. I want to input the events 
we'll, call, we'll rename this to um, Tori event so we're gonna mix it up okay and we want to pull in the listener I'll listen okay we all we want this from Tori API events okay cool now let's make a, a main function here okay it can be just a normal function it doesn't have to be async because we are listening okay so first of all uh, we will need to grab the element okay of remember this element we got here we want to grab this so we can put stuff on it okay and we can do that by creating a variable here okay we'll call this const display element el okay and document straight javascript stuff okay and what what do we call it let's check uh there we go cpu monitor that's the id okay so we go back here and done okay now we need to listen listen dot oops listen to the event which was what do we call this thing right here usage usage and we expecting a event back and we'll call this event and it's a type of um, this that's why we renamed this okay because we're using TypeScript that's why we need this and it is a string okay all right we're almost there guys okay and now we just need to put that in there uh, it might yeah auto completion it might be a no that's what it's saying because we we know there will be something so we put a bang there okay uh, payload i think it is here we go payload Oh, sorry we need to stringify this first to json dot stringify because we're getting an object back from Russ so that therefore we need to do this okay uh, and then down the bottom we just call this main function okay as soon as this thing kicks off all right guess what we're done now it's time to test okay uh, we need to put a couple of build scripts here first okay first thing we will need a build script uh, we'll call this build and then we just need to write root pack okay done and then we want one to be called dev so it fires up the um, server so this one's root pack uh, surf okay very cool that is it okay so what we need to do here we're going to run build okay make sure this thing builds without hassle okay look at that it's built properly and look this is the template we created here you see the reason why we do this it's a good thing like not that we need it in this uh, particular tutorial but imagine if you got some styling going on there uh, and then when you pack it uh, you don't need to like change anything here because you already have a template here right or if you got extra imports or whatever okay that's the reason why we're doing that okay so that is running so now we need to run this um, server Eighty, eighty. Oh, sorry, I got something running. Let me stop that. Okay, let's try it again. Cool. Nothing on there because <clears throat> this is the. It's a blank website, so nothing on there. But we'll open another window, and we got npm run tori dev. Okay, now. 
we will see this stuff. It's first time compile, that's why it's taking a long, little longer. Okay. Here we go. Here's our real time um, program CPU usage. Okay. Uh, it, it's not the full system CPU usage. Okay. This is just what um, what is using um, what this app is using right now, which is fairly low, like five percent, three percent. It goes down to like yeah, point two. So fairly easy. Um, so if we want to do a revision, oh, I've did some. Look, this is the console log I did. Um, oh, the print line in Rust. Okay, and it's this bit here. So this is how you know the bin. I hope you see the benefit of doing this because I mean it's it's a bit of hassle you know to get all this done, but it actually is not that hard. But you've got like CPU usage. This is important you know for us to uh, web RTC because we want to monitor what the server is using uh, resource wise. All right, guys. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, all this code will be on my GitHub. Uh, the link will be down below. And if you like this video, please um, give us thumbs up. That means a lot for me. And also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider do. And if you want to sponsor the channel for much more like great videos uh, surrounding WebRTC and Rust and Go and you know JavaScript, that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a few options for sponsorship okay uh, you can either be, become a patreon or you can directly um, send it to paypal there's a link down below as well all right thanks for your time and we'll see you in the next one thank you